dear students comparative account of vertebrate excretory process before going to the topic please subscribe my channel press the bell icon for notifications like share among your friends and comment in the last video we discussed about excretory organs in invertebrates in an invertebrates the excretory system is very simple and the mechanism is simple diffusion the diffusion of nitrogenous material from the body of the organism into the environment directly that means in the aquatic medium take place in invertebrates here we are going to discuss about excretory organ and physiology comparative animal physiology of excretion in vertebrates in vertebrates you know kidney and associated organs are the excretory structures in fishes the kidney is a tubular structure which run through the dorsal part of the body and having three region pronephros mesonephros and metanephros in fish elasmobranch fishes the kidney is called archinephros archinephros kidney but in bony fishes it is called pronephric kidney that means there are three divisions for the kidney head kidney mid kidney and hind kidney it is in tubular form let we can see the homeostasis or mechanism of urine formation in fish in detail the homeostasis problem is the same for freshwater fishes as for other freshwater animals water enters the body by osmosis and salts leach out to compensate the kidney which has large glomeruli produces a relatively large amount of dilute urine about 20% of the body weight per day this serves to remove the water by itself is insufficient to prevent gradual loss of salt extremely diluted salts are taken up from the fresh water and transported directly into the blood by certain specialized cells in the gills nitrogenous excretion is no problem some ammonia is carried away in large volume of dilute urine but most of it simply escape to the external medium by diffusing through the gills in contrast the homeostasis problem of marine fishes is unlike that of most marine animals the salt content of the blood of marine fishes is less than half that of sea water consequently marine fishes tend to lose water and gain salt this it would seem could be compensated most easily by excretion of urine more concentrated than the blood but the kidneys of fishes are not able to do this in marine bony fishes the kidney has small glomeruli and produces only a small amount about 4% of the body weight per day of urine which is of the same concentration as the blood the fish replaces its lost water by continually swallowing sea water and the special cells of the gill working in reverse reject salt to the external medium nitrogen is excreted mostly as ammonia but also as another detoxification product trimethyl amine oxide in sharks and rays ammonia is converted to urea and urea plays an important role in homeostasis urea is retained in the blood to such an extent that the blood is slightly more concentrated than sea water thus loss of water by osmosis is prevented and these fish have no need to swallow sea water any excess of salt in their body is removed via the rectal gland functionally analogous to the salt gland of birds osmotic and anaerobic regulation in fishes is under hormonal control This has been studied particularly in fishes such as eels and salmon which are able to move between fresh water and sea water in amphibians the kidney is mesonephros even though the kidney uh, filters urea much more in terrestrial amphibians rectal glands help to retain water when the amphibians are on land the rectal the water from the rectal gland can be utilized for the body functioning let we can see the physiology of amphibian kidney direct evidence of the occurrence of filtration at the glomerulus was first provided by experiments on the amphibian kidney 
although amphibians are formally given the status of terrestrial animal they are poorly adapted to life on land they excrete nitrogen in the form of urea and cannot produce urine more concentrated than the blood their skins are permeable to water on land amphibians are liable to lose water very rapidly by evaporation in fresh water they suffer entry of water by osmosis which is contracted by excretion of a large volume of dilute urine the urine is stored in a large bladder before being voided providing a reserve of water the animal can use when it comes on land when an amphibian leaves the water a number of physiological adjustments are made that have effect of conserving water the rate of glomerular filtration is reduced by restriction of the blood supply and this together with an increased release of anti diuretic hormone results in the production of a small volume of urine of the same concentration as the blood anti diuretic hormone or vasopressin which increases the permeability of the distal and collecting tubules to water also increase the permeability of the bladder to water and allows the stored urine to be reabsorbed into the body reptiles and birds the excretory material is uric acid have a look on the physiology of reptiles and bird kidney the main excretory product of birds and reptiles is uric acid since their glomeruli are relatively small so also is their daily volume of urine not highly concentrated by mammalian standards although it may be turbid with crystals of uric acid the urine of birds and reptiles is conducted not to a urinary bladder but to the terminal portion of the alimentary canal the cloaca from the cloaca it is voided with the feces like mammals and unlike the lower vertebrate birds and reptile have skins impermeable to water and thus are well adapted to terrestrial life the relative inability of the kidney to produce concentrated urine is compensated for in birds that possess salt glands which remove excess salt from their body these organs are modified tear glands that discharge a concentrated solution of sodium chloride through the nostrils salt glands enable marine birds to drink sea water with no ill effects so in mammals you know the kidney is metanephric and advanced form of kidney which filters the urea formed inside the body some amount of uric acid allantoin and creatinine can be excreted when we examine the physiology of mammalian kidney you know the processes are there are three processes glomerular filtration tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion primary urine is formed by filtration from the blood from this primary urine certain substances are reabsorbed into the blood and other substances are secreted into the primary urine from the blood the word secretion is used by renal physiologists to imply transport other than by filtration from the blood to urine filtration implies that all molecule below a certain size are allowed to pass non selectively into the primary urine reabsorption and secretion imply the existence of specific mechanism for the transport of specific substances the membrane covering the glomerulus allows the passage of water and all constituents of the blood plasma except proteins the glomerular capillaries are in intercalated in the course of an artery with the consequence that the pressure of the blood in these capillaries is higher than in the capillaries in other parts of the kidney opposed to blood pressure are the pressure of the fluid within bowman's capsule and the osmotic pressure exerted by the proteins of the blood plasma but the blood pressure is sufficiently in excess of some of these to ensure a rapid flow of fluid the glomerular filtrate or primary urine into bowman's capsule the glomerular filtrate contains the nitrogenous compound ultimately to be excreted in the urine as the glomerular filtrate passes through the proximal tubule 80% of the water and many substances of the value to the body example glucose is reabsorbed into the blood capillary surrounding the tubule this reabsorptive process is accomplished without any change in the concentration of the tubular fluid which remains the same as that of the blood plasma 
After traversing the loop of Henle, the remaining 20% of the glomerular filtrate passes into the distal tubule where further reabsorption, notably of salt, take place. If this is accompanied by a proportionate reabsorption of water, the tubular fluid remains at the same concentration as the blood plasma. But if the reabsorption of water is restricted, as it may be in certain circumstances, the tubular fluid becomes more dilute than the blood plasma. Under normal physiological condition, some 15% of the glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed in the distal tubule. Most of the remaining 5% is reabsorbed in the collecting tubule. The amount of fluid at this point called urine that reaches the pelvis of the kidney is only 1% of the volume originally filtered at the glomerulus, but it contains nearly all the nitrogenous waste of the filtrate in concentrated solution. A few substances are also secreted from the blood through the walls of the tubule into the tubular fluid. Dear friends, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and please subscribe my channel.